building a new pedal board, and as things go when you're gonna build a new pedal board, you start going like, I'm definitely gonna need this, I'm gonna need this, I'm gonna need this. So I kept buying all of the most expensive pedals of these things, and I'm looking at this going, why did they only let me do one thing? All that horsepower, and all you could do is like, one sound, two sounds in there, like, come on, man. There must be a box out there, uh, like, that can do an awesome multi-effect. One of the solutions that I've seen Vi and like Petrucci do is they'll buy an expensive modeler and then they'll turn off the modeling and just use the effects. So then I was going like, that's a good solution, but I want it for my pedal board. So a couple of friends had reached out to me right around the same time, said, have you tried the Ampuro 2 from Hot Tone? Like, I think it gives everything a run for its money. So, um, you know, I'm not really looking for a modeler, but this sucker touts like some super powerful chip sets and stuff. It seemed like a great candidate for my multi effect, right? And then I started looking at the models they had and I literally went, eee! It's like, finally, the person that did this had done their homework. It's got the things I love. It's got 2290s and like 80s choruses and stuff like the lineage of these effects. You're making digital effects. You got to know your history on these effects. So I want to show you the effects side of the Ampuro 2. I, I think it would be rude for me to not show you some of the amp sides. I'll show you that uh, maybe at the end. But for the bulk of the video, I'm going to use be using my Friedman. And um, I'm gonna go Friedman into the load box. The load box out is gonna go into this as an effects processor, same way I would with, uh, you know, any effects processor or pedal board. And that's how I was intending to use my pedal board as sort of like a pre and post effects thing. But I'm looking at this as a post effect and then it goes into the computer. Now it does a million things. Just getting that right, it does a million things. It's an audio interface. Uh, obviously it's like looper. Look, there's like ports here, ports here, ports here. It'll do everything. I just want it a multi-effect. So let's dive in a little deeper to the Ampuro 2 from Hato. The Ampuro has a very comprehensive software editor, but I'm gonna show you the touchscreen first because I just took this out of the box. I looked at what models it had and then I dove in I did not read any instructions because that's how I roll. And it was so clear and intuitive. I would dare say it's the best user interface I've ever just dove into. It's absolutely fantastic. So I've got an empty preset going right here and uh, I just have a super clean sound with my Tyler right here. This is gonna be the, the sort of very 80s inspired Lukather sort of vibe. Um, I'm gonna find a chorus. So that's always under mod, right? That one's really nice. But done. No, I'm, we're, we'll keep going. Now in true 80s fashion, one course is not enough. So we'll do like the uh, micro pitch shift. Now that's not under modulation. Uh, they always hide that. That is under frequency in this case. So we're going with, they have 80s detune. <laughs> But I think that's uh, mono detune. I want to go with dual, or you know, maybe those old even died. Uh, I think they were called H nine tens. That's one. But I want the three thousand, like the wide vibe going on here. So let's do dual detune. That's what I'm looking for. And that's a little heavy handed. So right here, you know, here's your three knobs. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, or you could just slide and go mega detune.
so the the classic is like I don't know around 11 or something like that and then just scooch over to the other detune let's bring that one to 11 ish <laughs> That's the chorus and the pitch shift. Let me turn off the chorus. So I just select that, hit off. That alone, that's really nice. And then this, I, this again, I screamed with glee when I saw this. It's like, well, I'd love to have this chorus on the other side. So it goes pitch shift, then chorus. Just push and hold down. And then I moved it over. I moved it by just like, it's exactly what you think it should do. Oh, it's so good. And then I just turn that off. Actually, I like it first. So I just moved those over because one thing I like to do when I'm sound designing is to add like a small room uh, just to give some dimension because the way that the effects would often work in the studio is they would mic the cab and you were getting effects in the control room. So you were getting speaker and room that was getting processed. So I like to kind of emulate that. It also gives a little extra, pushes the raw guitar signal away a little bit, which adds some nice dimension. Cool, let's just, let's shut off the choruses for a minute. Go back to that room, edit. Nice, so, you know, I may turn that off later, I don't know, but it's on there, which is lovely. So from here, we're gonna go to the delays. All right, analog delays, yeah, you know, everyone's got analog delays and tape echoes and stuff like that. Um, definitely gotta have the ping pong, that's important. You know, that's cool, but look at this, 2290 mod, Psh, yeah. <laughs> Love that. So the 2290 was an old TC Electronic two rack space box. It was a mono delay and then it would have modulation so you could it would pan and you could get chorus effects but the delay it's it's one delay which uh is silly but in this you could set up parallel pass so you could get stereo 2290s which who doesn't want that but we're gonna stay on target here we're just making a simple pedal board uh 22 i like this too which has a very vintage rack well, that's that's quite lovely. Really, I mean, it makes me happy. And you know, here's the other thing: I've used a lot of effects. The sign of a good effect is, th there's no like, you can't math it out. The sign of a good effect is when you plug in and you go, that's the sound, and you could start playing. Not like, oh, oh let me tweak, oh, I better add some high, high cut and low cut, oh, uh, up and maybe down a little more, maybe a, that's a nightmare. Who, who wants that business? It's just the delay, right? So give a, me an awesome delay with cool vibes, and, and just we'll get going. <laughs> Ooh. 
Well, look where I'm at now. We're gonna put on the chorus, put on the detune. I got a little room, and I got the delay. <laughs> So there's a lot happening. Fantastic. Back. Now, uh, what else do we need? Well, one reverb, of course, is not enough. All right? Bam! Another reverb. And this is going to be one of them big time, what's a large plate sound like in here? Reverb, current effect, I need something bigger than that. Oh, this needs a noise gate. Now, I, you, I know you're saying that's too many effects. Yes, but the reason I have them all up there is so that you can just turn them off if you don't want them. Oh, check the delay. Check this out. Ambience 2 is straight up circular delay. be rude if I didn't try some of the built-in amp models. So let's jump over to the software editor and I'll build a sound over there. <laughs> So that is the Ampiro 2 from Hot Tone. And uh, 
These come in around 429 bucks. This does all the meat and potato stuff quite well. So this is definitely a board contender for sure. I'm gonna keep you up to date as the board goes through and um, I'm really curious what this is gonna replace because I still have to do some head-to-head -head tests against uh, really some, some big power players and we'll see how some of the more esoteric effects hold up. But in terms of having like that one pedal on your board that's the do everything, meat and potatoes, just so you never caught off guard, this, I think is it for me. It's a huge step up from some of the old, uh, like 15 year old do everything pedals that I had been using before. So killer, can't wait to see what else it does. You're welcome to check out some links below and uh, we'll see you next time.